So today I will be talking about a very hot topic, as it was mentioned, and it's really hot in the media at the moment, and that is artificial intelligence, or AI as it is commonly known. So this is a technology that can not only replicate human behaviors and thinking, but is also expected to outperform us in a majority of tasks in the near future. And I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying this to realize the full potential that there is with this technology. And we're already doing a lot in the space. It's not a new technology. It has been around for a long time. But in recent years, we have seen a huge acceleration within the field. Now, it's often seen as something quite evil. And the media has got a very bad reputation, whether it's being used by hackers for exploiting vulnerabilities in antivirus software, or whether it's being used in autonomous weapons for warfare. And sometimes it can be seen to do bad despite the good intentions of its creators. So for example, in March 2016, an AI chatbot was created called Tay, and it was released into the world of Twitter, and it was designed to interact with people in playful conversations, and it would learn the more and more that it interacted with people. And it started off pretty friendly, as you can see, but just 16 hours after being live, Tay had to be taken down, because it had learned from these people that it was interacting with to become racist, become misogynistic, and was making a lot of inflammatory comments. But we are in luck. It's not all doom and gloom. We have been here before. Uh, not too long ago, I went to a lecture by the physicist Max Tierkmark, and he presented something similar to this, where both in biology and in chemistry, we have seen a similar inflection point. With new inv innovations and technologies, biologists could have used it for bad, to create bioweapons. But thankfully, they used it for new cures. Same with chemistry. They could have used the new innovations and the new technology for chemical weapons. But thankfully, they used it for new materials. So here we are again with AI. We've got a decision to make. As the whole of humanity, we could either use it for bad, for killer robots and the like, or we could use it for new solutions that are good for humanity. And thankfully, scientists and researchers are already taking a stand in the field. We saw in July 2015, over 100 AI specialists signed an open letter to the UN urging the ban on further developments on autonomous weapons and making the security around intelligent technologies a lot stricter. And we have seen a lot of innovation for good within the AI space. So this is a French startup that has created a digital nose, as they call it, and it has a variety of applications. It can be used for detecting high levels of pollution in cities, it can be used for quality control within the food industry. And it can even be used for sniffing out, as they say, certain diseases for medical diagnosis. We've also seen AI recognize patterns in behaviors and in certain incidents within a city. And this can be used to keep areas safe within a city and for predicting terrorist attacks. And this is just the beginning. When we combine AI with big data, there is huge potential, whether that's finding cures to certain diseases which at the moment are seen as terminal, or whether that's finding a solution to the impending problem of a global food crisis by looking harshly at the food industry, both from farming all the way to distribution, and seeing how we can optimize the process and make it a lot more sustainable. But with all of these innovations taking place, there is bound to be some big changes on a much more macro scale. We're talking economically, politically, and socially. So one of the big fears at the moment is jobs. What are we going to do in a world of AI? Are we still going to be employable as humans? Well, AI is very good at processing huge amounts of data and finding new patterns within data based on previous patterns that have been fed to it in the past. Now, we as humans, we're not very good at this, purely because we don't have the processing power or the capabilities. But what we are very good at is coming up with something truly novel something truly creative. An AI, on the other hand, is not so good at this. So to give you an example of an AI's creativity, I'm going to show you a very short clip that was uh, created by an AI, and it is a sci-fi screenplay that it had learned to make based off of several sci-fi screen, uh, several sci-fi film scripts and TV scripts that had been fed to it. future with mass unemployment, 
young people are forced to sell blood. That's something I can do. <laughs> you should see the boy and shut up. I was the one who was going to be 100 years old. I saw him again. The way you were sent to me. That was a big, honest idea. I am not a bright light. Well, I have to uh, go to the skull. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> As you can see, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And the AI really struggled with certain words in particular contexts. And it really struggles with very abstract concepts. So even if an AI were to create something truly innovative, whether it was a piece of art or replicating an artist's style, could we call it a masterpiece? Because at the end of the day, a masterpiece is wrapped in storytelling. It's wrapped in vulnerabilities, emotions, and human experiences. So if all of a sudden we see a piece of artwork and we know that was created by a set of algorithms, is it all of a sudden quite superficial? So yes, perhaps AI could take some of our jobs, which are easily automated, but then again, humans might move to more towards the creative industries and towards the caregiving industries. And we might find that the jobs which are available for us are a lot more beneficial for employees and for the community. Now, more longer term, we might have to think for alternative sources of income where that's going to come from. Governments might provide a universal basic income. We might see as well that corporate social responsibility has a larger part to play by investing in schools, in infrastructure, and in healthcare. So it's incredibly important that we start to foster this culture for corporate responsibility now. But of course, jobs aren't just about income. For all we know, income, wealth, private property, none of that could survive what is being called the fourth industrial revolution. And if they don't, our fears around losing jobs for a source of income could become redundant. But if we don't have jobs, what are we going to do with the rest of our time? It's not just money that we need jobs for. It gives us a sense of self-esteem, something to do with our time. Well, maybe we could look to Athenian society, where they spent a lot of time developing their culture, looking into literature, education, athleticism. Now, at the time, they had slaves doing jobs and work. But in the future, we might have AI and technology undertaking this role. And instead, we can focus on ourselves and making us the best people that we can be. AI could also have a massive impact on media by creating a trustworthy news source that people really do trust, because it's not influenced by political interference or popular culture or even by systemic bias. But having said this, AI could actually do a lot of good by having an agenda. For example, an AI might be able to present certain news stories to you with the aim of dissolving political regional conflicts. So for example, I might consider a certain community of people as my enemy, purely because I've only ever seen them in a negative light and in negative news stories. But what if an AI were able to present a different narrative to me, something that's a lot more positive and change, changes the way that I see these people? So if this does happen, and we see media becoming a lot more open, all of a sudden, we might see people becoming a lot more tolerant. Maybe nation states might engage in a lot more open discussion and seek to decrease the number of global threats that there are, for example, a nuclear war. AI can also have a massive impact on education, creating something a lot more tailored based on your skill level, based on how you like to learn, and offering a much broader range of topics to learn based on what your interests are and your background. So gone would be this outdated model that was born out of the Industrial Revolution era, which is very much a one-size-fits-all approach. And instead, we would move away from class batch time and into a world where we can engage in technology and in immersive experiences and with some truly motivating learning tools. And if we become a lot more tolerant with education and media makes countries a lot more tolerant, one of the biggest barriers left to overcome will be verbal communication. Now, we've seen a lot with voice assistants like Siri and Alexa, and as well with machine translation. But AI isn't very good at picking up sarcasm and subtle comments. So for example, in England, we're known for being overly polite and not always saying necessarily what we mean. So at the end of a long day, we might be invited for a drink and say, oh yeah, I'd love to, but 
Now, an AI will take this at face value, but a human is able to read between the lines and realize that's a, pro a pretty solid English no. <laughs> Likewise, you might be working on a stressful project. Someone asks, how does it go? How's it gone? And you say, oh yeah, it didn't quite go as planned. Once again, an AI will take this at face value. But a human is able to pick up on subtle cues, on facial expressions, even maybe a slight tremor of panic in the voice, and realize what you really meant to say was, I may have caused irreversible damage on a monumental scale. <laughs> so as you can see, it's quite hard for an AI to decipher what on earth we're on about. We're messy by nature, but that's what makes us humans so great. So having said this, in a few decades to come, we will see live audio machine translation. And we will see people from all backgrounds, all ethnicities, able to communicate with each other. So where we have seen religious and cultural isolation that has occurred after millennia and millennia of these linguistic barriers, they'll all of a sudden start to dissolve. We might then see an increase in human migrations worldwide. And if this is the case, the concept of the nation state, which has lasted for hundreds and hundreds of years, bounded by ethnic and cultural identity, might all of a sudden disappear. Now, this might sound all very extreme, but we do have to think, are our laws and the way that governments are being run truly modernized? Are they keeping up with technology? And are they ready for the changes in identity politics? Already today, with globalization, you might ask someone, oh, where are you from? Seems like an easy question, but where was I born? Where are my parents from? Where did I grow up? Where do I live now? All of a sudden, it's not such an easy question to answer. So you can see it's not such a far off scenario. Now, AI is a massive topic for discussion. And in the past, we always approached innovations and new inventions with very much a trial and error approach. For example, the invention of fire. We made a lot of mistakes with fire, and eventually we got to the point where, OK, perhaps we ought to come up with some sort of fire extinguisher so that our eyebrows can live to see another day. But this then led on to fire alarms and fire, fire departments. The thing is, with AI, we can't do this. It's an incredibly powerful technology. So even the slightest mistake could have huge catastrophic consequences worldwide, which are irreversible. Having said this, AI is an incredibly useful tool. And if done right, and if we educate it in the right way, it could really benefit humanity rather than just replace us. So it's important that we all engage in the discussion and that we also realize that AI can maximize not just the benefits of humanity, but can be used in a very efficient way. But AI is impressionable, it is vulnerable, and it needs to be nurtured just like a child does by its parent. So in order to ensure that it does benefit not just the few and all of humanity, we all need to engage in AI safety research, not just the few, but all of us, entire of humanity. Thank you.